Uh, Chairman Platt. Chairman, Chairman Green, nicely done. Thank you very much for leading that uh, executive session. That was brilliant. And I kept getting messages as I was driving um, from Tawton saying that I could not unmute myself without the administrator's approval. So Kathy, I don't know if you saw me, but after a half dozen or a dozen times, I stopped <laughs> trying no, I to the unmute, one thing, unmute you. <laughs> So, um, but that was so well done. There was absolutely no need. And given, given that I am here switching from cell to laptop, Bob, would you be so kind to open the public hearing while I'm still pulling up agenda items and recording? Because there's still Perfect. So with regard to tonight's meetings, we have several matters on agenda. Um, uh, the first one on behalf of uh, the applicant uh, regarding a home application special permit for plumbing and heating business applicant, Matthew O'Riordan, excuse me, for the property located at uh, 28 uh, Hollywood Terrace. Specifically, um, Mr. O'Riordan is applying for a home occupation special permit to run his plumbing and heating business at his address, which is again, 28 Hollywood Terrace, North Reading, Mass, map seven, parcel one, pursuant to article 20-42 of the North Reading uh, zoning bylaws. Is Mr. O'Riordan um, in attendance? Uh, yes, I'm here. Uh, thank you, Mr. O'Riordan. Um, if you might um, be so kind as to um, uh, let the uh, board and the uh, uh, public viewing public um, uh, make some uh, a statement regarding uh, your application. Uh, so I'm opening a plumbing and heating business and I want to run an office out of the Home at 28 Hollywood Terrace. That's that's basically it. Okay. Uh, pursuant to this, I would take note that um, Community Planning Commission on March 2nd uh, submitted to the board uh, the following statement. The Planning Commission does not object to the application provided soon to the position provisions of 200-42 home occupation uh, and as adhered to. Um, so Mr. Reardon, um, with specific regard to the, um, the use of the property, um, can you give a little bit more insight as to what's gonna go on at 28 Hollywood Terrace um, just only because uh, as our almost as under our purview and our our obligation, we're trying to con make considerations for your interest, uh, but at the uh, at the same understanding of what impact it will have on the uh, community in which uh, Twenty Eight Hollywood Terrace uh, that activity is located. So, uh, I have one truck I park in the driveway, a uh, work van. And then everything, all tools and everything are stored in the van. So there's nothing outside or anything. Uh, all the office work will be done inside the house in an office. And how long has the business been in? How, how long have you had the business ongoing? Uh, about six weeks. Okay. Uh, how many employees or is it a, is it a sole a solo? Um, it is a sole proprietorship. And is there any plan in the immediate once you do really get it going to bring somebody on, or is that just uh, too early in the um, in your business plan? Um, there's currently no plan to do that as of right now.
any questions from the board? Yeah, just in any of your business, um, do you have uh, any customers, uh, clients coming to your house? No, no, never. And is it just the single van that you um, you employ? Uh, yes, just one van. Is there uh, uh, any other questions from the, uh, the board with regard to uh, the application at this time? Is there anybody from the public, uh, any neighboring properties? Have we heard from anybody, um, Kathy, if, uh, if you might know since the time of the, the application filing? I don't believe I've gotten any, <laughs> any uh, about our um, letters on this. Uh, Mr. Reardon, would there be any signage on the house or is it just going to be the van? Uh, just a van. Uh, often we get asked about um, uh, supply <clears throat> de deliveries. Uh, are you do you basically go to the supply houses to pick up all your stock and inventory? Yes. So, is there any expectation of anything special delivery for purposes? You know, whether you're going to get an increase in in delivery trucks of any kind, or is it all? Uh, just done by you directly? No, it's all done by me directly. And if something's ordered, it goes directly to a job site. Uh, Ms. Platt. Mr. Brain, is the applicant aware of our standard conditions? Primarily being that no one other than the applicant is in employed in the business, that you're limited to 300 square feet of space for the in-house use. There's no external storage of supplies or equipment and no signage other than what, of course, you could have on your truck. Okay. All right. The special permits, if granted, run with the applicant. So if you move someplace, uh, we do this again. Um, or if you sell your business, they do that again. But otherwise, it would run with you. OK, sounds good. All right. I have no further questions. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Ms. Platt. Uh, Kathy? Um, there is one other thing. It's good for four years. So in four years, you may get a letter from the town clerk asking you if you want to renew that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna close the um, uh, um, the hearing. Um, if anybody would like to make a motion regarding uh, the application for special permit. Can we get a second on the close? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Can I get a second on the closing of the of the uh, the um, oh. of the hearing? I'll second that. Thank you. Uh, would anybody like to make a motion regarding the application? Leave that to one of you. <laughs> motion in favor, Maria Lockhart. So you may have, um, sort of, if I think Kathy was good enough to send us draft um, For that purpose, um, I'd like to move that um, pursuant to the um, application that a special permit for the use of the home location at, located at 28 Hollywood Terrace in North Reading uh, be permitted for uh, purposes of the occupation for plumbing and heating business pursuant to article 200 dash 42 of our bylaws um, attended to that uh, the uh, restrictions that uh, no other person other than the residential occupant shall be employed therein no other uh, no more than 300 square feet shall be devoted to such use 
the funeral display of goods, wires, wares, or signs related to the home occupation uh, visible from the exterior. But the permit shall run with the applicant and is no way transferable. There'll be no customers coming to the premises and this permit shall be valid for four years. Um, also to be noted that um, only the single vehicle that was um, discussed in the um, in the applicants applicants um, conversation will be um, will be able to be located on the premises. I'll second the motion. Uh, noted. Um, <clears throat> call the vote. All in favor? Ben Raguchi, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Uh, Bob Green, aye. So, Mr. O'Riordan, um, with the grant of the um, uh, the variance and the special permit, um, is it uh, twenty? Uh, how many days um, appeal? Um, by twenty days. Twenty days. Twenty days. Thank you. And after uh, the expiration of twenty days, then you can. Kathy, remind me again. Does he need to come in and pick up his special permit, or will those be mailed out from the town clerk? I will send out um, a copy of the decision after the 20 day appeal period, you'll come down and get the certified copy from the town clerk that needs to be recorded. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Riordan. Uh, good luck with uh, your business plan. You will. Moving on into the agenda um, regarding the matter of 40 Abbott Road, again, North Reading, is the applicant uh, here? Uh, yes, I am here. Mr. Reedy. Yes, I, I am here. Before we jump into that uh, green, would you read the public hearing notice to open that hearing. So for purposes of 40 Abbott Road, the applicant Brian Reedy is asking for a home occupation permit to run his food truck catering business out of his office, out of his home at 40 Abbott Road, North Reading, Map 15, Parcel 24, pursuant to Article 200-42 of the North Reading Zoning Bylaws. Mr. Reedy is here. Uh, Mr. Reedy, if you might take a moment to um, uh, tell the board and the viewing public about your application for this permit. So what we're trying to do is just establish a home office uh, at my house. Um, the food truck itself, we have a parking spot for. It may periodically be on the property. Um, I like to do some work on it, uh, maintenance, stuff like that. Um, we have a commissary that we use that can store all our food, uh, wastewater. Um, uh, we can get our water from, from the commissary and uh, store our inventory there as well. Um, so there wouldn't be any actual, uh, other than the office uh, and the occasional truck, uh, there wouldn't be anything else other than that um, regarding uh, our business on our property. What kind of food truck? So it's, uh, we sell sandwiches in Boston. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a program in Boston that we are partners with that uh, we're gonna be in uh, three days a week and uh, it's American style sandwiches uh, for breakfast and lunch. And um, so, you know, we do, uh, we, do we, we, we change up our menu a lot, but uh, we try to do uh, classic favorites um, that you know everybody kind of loves, uh, such as like a spicy chicken sandwich that's a, that we have that it's very popular. Um, we have pastrami, and uh, all this stuff is purchased from uh, a wholesale supplier. Um, none of it's made at our house, or um, you know we don't again keep any of the food there. Um, but we are looking to have uh, an established uh, being able to register the business um, to our property. How long have you had the business going? Uh, since 2016, um, we started off. Uh, we have one truck, um, and it's kind of grown. We we were in great. We were in Chelmsford for a while, and um, 
we've just kind of grown and we're trying to get kind of more, we're trying to grow a little bit, scale up, uh, get more customers, obviously, uh, increase revenue. Um, and Boston's a great place to do that. And uh, it's really hard for us to be able to commute uh, from Chelmsford to Boston every day. Um, but we, again, uh, that's, that's, we're just trying to get it a little bit closer to the city for the days that we are working there. Uh, any other, so, um, I might ask, um, so the only, so what you're saying is the only time the uh, truck will be on premises at Abbott road would be for maintenance or is it going to be kind of. So we, our commissary in Woburn is on the way into Boston and they open really early in the morning. So uh, it, it's easy for us to get to the commissary um, from our house in North Reading uh, and then to Boston uh, on the three days a week that we're working in Boston. Uh, we also do a lot of corporate catering inside the city um, and a lot of it's booked uh, weeks, months in advance. Um, so the days that we're not working, it probably wouldn't be there, but the days that we are working, it may be there. So in theory, all right, if that plan follows, the truck will be in on Abbott three days a week. It parked for the start of the day, end of the day, into the next day. And on the, the other four non-Boston um, days or when you're not making the stop at the commissary, it'll be located at a, an alternate parking location. We do have an alternate parking location uh, in Chelmsford for when we do other, uh, we, like again, we do a lot of uh, corporate catering. So, it, and it's pretty much across the board uh, throughout Massachusetts, we travel everywhere. Um, so it's gonna be on the days that it uh, is convenient for us to have there. Um, it's just gonna, you know, it's just, it kind of is a, a fluid um, calendar uh, or scheduling that we use uh, because a lot of, again, a lot of this stuff comes in weeks or months in advance. Um, so what we have planned for uh, concrete is the Boston um, route or the Boston locations. Um, but there's gonna be other things that come up where we're gonna maybe need the truck there. Uh, and then there's gonna be days that we don't need the truck there. Um, and so that's just kind of, it's, it's, it's a fluid kind of process that, that we go through with the truck. And if we don't have, um, Inspector Noel on the call, I don't believe. And I did speak with him, uh, and I think he he's, he gave me the green light uh, from the Board of Health, right? Um, actually, I was thinking from, yeah, there's sort of two questions where, or a couple questions there. One is food prep, which if, if it's not being done at the home, it's being done at the commissary in Woburn, that takes it out of our jurisdiction. Um, the parking of the vehicle, a commercial vehicle, to one ton is permitted on premises. And I don't know how big your food truck is, but if it exceeds that, um, that could be the issue in a, in a residential zone. The part, not the, not conducting your, the home occupation part portion, the record keeping that part, that's not an issue. Um, but, no, so, it's, so I guess, Mr. Reedy, how big is the truck? Uh, I don't have an exact weight on it, uh, but it is a larger vehicle. Um, I could get back to you on the actual weight, um, but, but it is uh, a little bit bigger than uh, a normal size um, pickup truck. Okay. Um, it, it does, it does, are we talking, um, <laughs> I know this is kind of suspect. So you know what a UPS truck or the, uh, you know. Uh, I, I, you might compare ground. it to a UPS truck, yes. Does anybody know how much, how, what scale or size that um, falls into for tonnage? Uh, I don't. So I'm, I'm throwing that out as a general question to anybody. So one way to sort of, to kind of work around that issue is you could, and I'm gonna leave it to you three to, to to make the motion and, and vote on this, um, but approve the, the home occupancy portion of it and then say any parking is subject to town regulation. So if it falls within the, the allowance and I have no issue with it, um, if it doesn't, then that would- we could, we could, yeah, if it doesn't, we, we can find another location. So, 
And I, and I, I hear you that you're sort of on the way and Woburn's an easy, easy stop on the way into to Boston, but uh, the concept here is to have these home ops be essentially invisible to your neighbors so that they don't know that there's any business going on in a residential neighborhood. And as long and everyone's allowed to have one work truck, I believe it's the one ton limit and I just haven't pulled up the, the code, the regulation quickly enough, but whatever it is, you're welcome to have it. Thank you. By the way, uh, any deliveries being made to the property, does everything go through the commissary? Everything goes through the commissary. Yeah, we don't have any signage or there won't be any deliveries um, for anything regarding our business. Any other questions from the board? Um, any, uh, I know there were some, um, I know there was a message sent in, well, for purposes of the record, I'll note that um, from Community Planning Commission dated March 2nd, uh, in response to comment regarding 40 Abbott Road, uh, community planning took note that it does not object to the application, provided the provisions of 200-42 are adhered to. Um, further, um, this was submitted uh, to the attention of uh, Ms. Morgan's office, um, specifically from um, Megan Goddard, uh, writing in support of Brian Reedy at 40 Abbott. I am a neighbor at 46 Abbott Road and I have been made aware of his business moving to his home address. I have no issues with this and I fully support it. Please let me know if you need anything else. Thank you acknowledged uh, Megan Good Goddard. Uh, that should be noted as being part of the record uh, for today's hearing. So why is there another one, Bob? Uh, please, Kath, uh, Ms. Kathy, I'm trying. Uh, I thought there was another one, but I don't have it in front of me. Um, it was from... Um... Doug Richards and his mother. Good afternoon, Kathy Ruffini. I'll follow up with the letter we received in the mail to our address at 9 Junction Road, North Reading, regarding a special permit to run a catering business office out of their home at 40 Abbott Road. We, Doug, and Pat Richards have no problem with granting them with approval. Thank you for your time, Doug and Pat. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for that assist. Uh, I don't think there's any other. Uh, is there any other? Um, any other? Um, public comment from uh, neighbors of Butters, uh, anybody in the general area um, regarding this matter. If there isn't, um, uh, I'd like to move to um, close the public hearing. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Raguchi. Uh, does anybody want to make a motion regarding uh, the application submitted regarding the use of 40 Abbott Road for um, special permit for home occupation. Yeah, I'll move a uh, favorable action on a special permit to Brian Reedy, 40 Abbott Road, North Reading, map 27, parcel 47 for a special permit for home occupation for his food truck and catering business per article 200-42 of the North Reading zoning bylaws. Uh, special permit shall contain the following mandatory conditions. No person other than the residential occupant um, shall be employed therein. No more than 300 square feet should be devoted to the use of the home office. Should be no display of goods, wares, signs related to the home occupation visible from the exterior. Uh, special permit <coughs> for home occupation runs with the applicant and is in no way transferable. Uh, there'll be no customers coming to the premise and that the special permit shall be valid for four years. And I'm, I'm also, um, at, at the chair 
uh, at her suggestion um, that the vehicle is in compliance with um, the uh, residential zoning uh, restrictions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raguchi. Do I have a second on his motion? And Maria Lockhart second, Mr. Iguchi's motion. Thank you, Ms. Lockhart. Uh, at this time, I call the matter to a vote. All in favor? Ben Raguchi, aye. aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Bob Breen, aye. Motion passes. Um, thank you, board members. Uh, so as just noted in the, um, in the uh, motion brought by Mr. Raguchi, uh, Mr. Reedy, um, you'll be receiving uh, there's a 20-day appeal <laughs> process that's open to the public for purposes of the, uh, the grant. Um, after that period of time, uh, you'll be able to get a copy of the permit and, um, and at Town Hall, and um, you should be all set. But again, um, uh, I think there'll be a follow-up. We'll bring it to the attention of uh, of the town um, inspector for purposes of confirming that the um, the truck is falls within um, acceptable guidelines under uh, North Reading Town law bylaws. Okay, great. Congratulations. Thank you for uh, taking the time and making the uh, the application to the town for um, for purposes of the home office. Thank you to the board. Best of luck with your luck. business. Good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks. You too. Uh, returning to the agenda for tonight's meeting um, regarding the matter of uh, 11 Kings Row, uh, North Reading, um, variance for a, a three car garage. Um, pursuant to the uh, hearing notice on the petition of Christopher Bond of 11 Kings Road, North Reading, map 66, parcel 16 for a variance from the side setback for construction of a three car garage according to the requirements outlined in the dimensional and density regulations of the North Reading zoning bylaws. Um, is, um, is Mr. Bond in attendance tonight? It's Renee Bond, it's his wife. Oh. Uh, Can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, I can. Good uh, evening. Can the board. Uh, so, um, Ms. Bond, if you might um, be so kind as to um, enlighten us with regard to your application. Yes, definitely. So currently we have um, just about a 20 uh, foot width um, wide garage. Um, so it's kind of like a single bay. We can only fit one of our vehicles in there currently. And so the goal is to be able to accommodate our growing family. So we wanted to expand on the garage so we can fit our larger, right now we have, we got a larger SUV, but we will soon need a van. So to be able to fit all the vehicles. And in addition to that, the, you know, snow blower and some of the kids toys and stuff, we wanted to be able to expand on the garage, which I believe our, our current setback, it's, it's 25 feet. And um, what we would be needing, it's, it's, it would be 20.1 feet would be left with. So we'd be requesting 4.9 additional feet. Okay. So I know that the uh, plans were submitted. Um, yes. For purposes. Um, uh, do you want to um, make note of any of, of the drawings or um, in particular that, uh, that uh, you, with, your group has, has So made. with regard to the renderings, what we were thinking was um, in addition to the expansion of the garage, we were gonna utilize some of that space um, to expand on the mud room that's right there on the other side of the door inside the garage. Um, so that was what we were kind of thinking. And obviously, in doing the expansion of the garage, it's going to alter the exterior um, a little bit, um, you know, the roof line there. And we did speak to um, the surrounding neighbors. So um, to the left of us, Tim and Tia Smith, who would directly affect 
Um, and then Lococo's on the other side and then our neighbors both across the street um, who are all in support of our, our project. Bob, can you see the, the map? Uh, I've got a copy of the uh, the town map, and I'm looking at the photos that are on screen, which show the current. Um, this is the home current and this is the proposed the proposed and uh how it will obviously alter i think what's what's i'm trying to just um look um, back to the uh, pre previous drawing uh, pre uh previous uh map uh plan which showed the uh the okay. outline in regard mm -hmm. to um the property lines as well as um, uh, the existing layout of the the entire property grounds. And I know that, um, I don't want to get ahead of it, so, uh, uh, but with regard to the, um, the planned project, um, I might ask at this time if there's any uh, does anybody from the board have any uh, questions with regard to um, Mrs. Bond's um, presentation? Yeah, did we have a note from uh, the building inspector on this? Um, he submitted some pictures and he's wondering about this shed. Um, and how far away from the property line it is. Okay, so without jumping ahead on the shed, I, I just the moment, um, I want to be able to keep um, the, the garage construction as the, the point of the focus within the hearing matter tonight. Um, but again, you're looking at the need for the um, the setback from the, the uh, from the property line, and twenty point one at the closest spot. That's right. Uh, thank you. Um, I would take note that. Um, uh, within their request for comment, the um, Planning Commission uh, replied on uh, March 2nd again, uh, questioned what the hardship would be for this request. And um, I think that does speak to the, um, the overall guideline that uh, our board is often tasked with, with regard to this. And while I usually will appreciate brevity in a, uh, a public document. Um, my, I would only almost have to um, uh, make a, a guess as to what they're, they're questioning. And it's an interesting one that has to be raised here for purposes of granting a variance, which is um, the simple desire to um, just increase the space for purposes of this particular type of vehicle, um, unless somebody from the board has a thought to that regard as well. Um, and because it is going to substantially change the, out, uh, the, the layout of your home, which is obviously within your purview. But again, uh, and while it may not, uh, the, neighbor, the neighborhood is, is well spaced and I don't think it's, it, it doesn't appear that there's any input from objection that we've received from neighbors or uh, from the neighborhood itself. 
uh, the point should be noted that was made by community planning just for purposes of um, this hearing. Uh, I'm, again, to the board itself, is there anybody, is there any um, any further thought or question before we address the question of the, the shed location, which is not within the, the application tonight? Yeah, there's a, a number of elevations in the package, you just may want to um, Kathy, if you scroll down to the board and whoever is participating has a, the benefit of looking at, I think that's that's the new proposed exterior from the back. Maybe that's the front on the right hand side uh, with the three, three um, garage bays and then residential above. So, Ms. has there been any topographical um, examination or engineering input with regard to how this extension out from your existing property is going to change? Other than the, the drawings, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, other than the other than the drawings, there hasn't been any any further. No, it's just this has just been the the basis of it. Just these drawings here. I'm looking at the the layout. I think that's the next screen, Kathy, on the floor plan. So for the um, addition here on the second floor. Is it what are the bottom bottom right is, is a proposed second floor addition, and it looks like we're adding the adding four five rooms. Can you tell us what uh, looks like one is technically a bedroom with a closet and the other others are probably technically not without closets so what does no um, as a right as a right now it's just all we just have it all storage we haven't talked about anything like that yet right now it was just the focus is on the garage and the mudroom expanding on the mudroom that was right there given the cost of everything it was just going to, we were going to use some of that garage space for the mudroom. So right now it's, it's extremely tight. And so we were just going to expand on that. And, um, and, the, and then the rest of it would be the garage to put the, the larger, we'd hopefully be able to put, put more than one uh, vehicle in there. So just the, the thought on the upstairs with the current layout, whether that may not be the, the ultimate, um, design, uh, but the question I ha had is if you're, if this will increase bedroom count, will the existing septic be sufficient? Oh, right, yeah. No, no, I do, I do understand, understand all that. No, we have a, um, we have a uh, four bedroom septic. They put it in, White Ridden, we bought the house. Uh, but right now, this is just solely on the, um, on the garage in the in the mudroom. But if it's in front of us and you're presenting plans for a two-story addition, we have to look at both. Oh, of course, of course. And are there is it currently four bedrooms in the house? It's three bedrooms. Okay, so you can add one if you already have a four-bedroom septic. Yeah. I just don't want you to 
if part of your plan is to get this approved, get this, um, obviously you want to get the whole thing approved. Um, and if you go back to, if you put, if you put closets in any of these other rooms upstairs, you would either have to have your, you would have to have the septic review to make sure it's sufficient. Otherwise, yeah. um, you won't be able to get your building permits or if you get your building permits and there are bedrooms when you go to sell, that's going to. Of course, that will... this is our forever home. So <laughs> <laughs> some point, I don't want to pack point, up again. <laughs> some point it will be transferred. But yes, so just um, it's more it's more for your for you to know. Um, that would be a sticking point yeah, even, of course. even if you got a financing on it in the future and they did an appraisal and inspection it would of course so we've seen those get people get caught on those so just sure heads up on that. yeah definitely and one, one of the reasons i brought up the topography if there's been any i know you're going to expand the um is it the asphalt driveway and it looks like a walkway it might be or will be left around the side of the new construction yes so that um so you're at a is it you're at 11 i'm just wondering if nine uh understands that there'll be a change in there might be a change in water flow because right now you've just got grass absorbing water and suddenly it could just flow onto his or her property and that's why i'm asking if there's been any i can't discern from the uh, the drawings i know from the with the photo how it looks and lays out but yeah. i don't want i i don't think we'd want to uh, to be without giving some concern for that as in, while it might seem is not much of anything it could be and especially with the proximity uh, you, since you're drawing it so close to the um the property line where that i'm assuming that fence might be the marking the, the fence that runs between yours and yep. is it is it nine is that the yes. actual property line yeah is, so, yeah yeah i mean uh, where are you with your um with your development team um other than the act these the rent the, the drawings and the, the this layout is as early as we're this is the early stages this is where we uh ended up we're trying to see you know how everything goes here to before we move forward i didn't want to get too involved before having this answer and then we'll obviously because we'll have to change things if um if we couldn't add those ad additional five feet then we would alter the exterior a bit it would go down to a two car and it would be it would just it would change the the exterior so i want to we want to wait till this point first and then we'll get right into it I might defer to um, uh, Ms. Platt because longer standing ex experience with the board uh, activities, but is there any merit for uh, giving that further investigation or consideration with regard to this specific application? The, um, you know, all good questions. It looks like from the aerial view I have of this or aerial shot we have, the existing asphalt goes is as shown on that plan. The bituminous driveway already exists. So if they are keeping that the same, um, I don't think we'll see that much of a change in water flow to your to your question on impact on the neighbors. Well, when they, when there's a, below the photo, there was a image, Kathy, you might be able to draw it up. Um, with an existing, please, with there's an existing photograph of the, um, of 11 as it exists now. And then below it is a, it looks like an architectural or a drawing rendering. And it looks as if the asphalt driveway um, is expanded out. And even on the, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the layout plan, which shows the existing garage to be removed. Um, you can see an expansion across the entire length of the new construction uh, of, the, um, of the driveway. 
I know the photo was up earlier. I don't think it was in our packet. Um, actually, it was. Um, but it, again, and it was computer, I'm assuming it's computer generated. So that, all right, well, this is interesting because that's the existing space. This is the existing. Right, so I, it doesn't, I, I might, it might, this might address the question because it looks as if that asphalt is already in place. To the applicant, is the I, I know your uh, your question is going towards, or one of the questions is going towards water runoff. Is the intention to expand on the asphalt on the impervious surface, or is that remaining as yeah. is? No, it's going to be it's, it's going to be ripped up. It's actually going to be lowered. It's a, it's actually going to be lowered. It's a, higher it's a little bit higher than it should be. So, with the new plan, I don't think we're going to do asphalt on the side of the house. We're not going to be doing asphalt on the side Just of the house. Just paver path. Just like a paver path. Does that make sense? But, uh, so along the, um, we're going to see the, would see the, the house and the garage extend out to the right. And then for the, the buffer along the right hand side of the garage, it would be a paver path rather than the existing Asphalt and correct. Asphalt. With landscaping, with yeah, them. correct. There'll be a very small basketball court at that point. <laughs> yeah, that'll have to go. <laughs> All right. And I think did I miss it in the in in the materials, Kathy? Did we have anything written? Um, uh, letters of support from neighbors or. I don't yeah, believe I got anything from I'm sorry, what? Yeah, there should be four attached. Oh, hold on. Did you send them to me? My husband went in and, um, oh, they're all uploaded. I think Kathy, you had uploaded them for him. Or you did? Uh, my husband did. Oh, all right. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Go into the filing. Hold on. With the plot plan and everything. Mm -hmm. okay. Comments from CPC. Mm -hmm. I don't see any here in, a, in this application. Of copies if you want. Um, uploaded them with the plot plan. They were oh, uploaded yeah. along with the plot plan in the same. Oh, okay. Oh, in right. the same folder. The, the, I see variant supports PDFs. Uh, in the same? Yeah. No, Maybe the same. Maybe um, I have all the copies. Oh, I have all the copies too. Yeah. You can email them to me if you want to. Okay. Do you want me to email them, Kathy? Yeah. Okay. You do right now? Okay. Yeah. okay. He's going to go email them right now. That's weird. Yeah. He uploaded them to the pop that he said, but yeah. So, Thank you. I just want to make sure that those get um, yeah, no, I appreciate it. recognized and included in the public record. I appreciate it. And that's one of the things that we look at closely. If you're going closer to a lot line to make sure that the neighbors who are most impacted are in support. Yes. And Okay, I know Kathy, you're probably looking at that. Um, something to look at for us also to consider is the side elevation facing the neighbor to the right as you're looking at the house. So it would be is it? Long, the long um, driveway. 
Scott? I think it's it's drawing A dash two point two. Is that what you're I haven't found it yet. So it'd be um, I want to see what the neighbor would be looking at when they're looking at the side of the, the new addition. We have that in our you mean like a picture picture or a sketch? No, it, it, it would be a um, it would be one of the architectural okay. drawings because it's um, I think if the uh, there's let's see blah 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 it's the it's the other one the one that you just showed is the opposite side the chimney is to the is on the other side of the uh, the construction so is that so then the, the chimney is as you face the house is that, house, house is that what um and maybe the applicant can confirm for us oh, yeah, right just, here. um i think probably it's not yeah. i think that's the far side away from the closer neighbor oh, um, okay scroll down just a little bit that nope right there so the bottom right hand right. corner that elevation four is that what the the side that the neighbor would see for yes yeah and those letters were sent kathy okay Oh, and I get it. I think there's there's a little bit of depth perception issue looking at the drawing, but the bump out in the back that that's already that's existing. Yeah, and that's on the, the far other end of the house. It's not. On yeah, the that's something I know. It looks just, like it in the drawing. Yeah, it's the far. It's the chimney side. Got it. And Where's my other so, like, I know it looks like it's right there. Yeah, that was existing. And then the roof line of the new addition, actually, it's this looks like it's two stories in the front and then it tapers off in the back. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah. So this is all still, you know, early in the in the designs because we didn't want to look like a, a giant box because right now it's all mm -hmm. attic up there. So she was kind of playing around with it. But um, so again, it is still early, but that's why she was we we're doing different things with the front, like the um, like the farmer's porch there, trying to offset mm -hmm. trying to make it a little bit uh add a little dimension or something on the front or you know the little roof above the um the garage just trying to play around with it but we're gonna we're gonna be going back to it a lot to to work on this this is very early um but again this was we just wanted to see if we even had that ability to gain that extra 4.9 feet or if that was off the table because then we would just stick to you know, like I said, the, the two car garage, like a larger two car garage and trying to um, work in those parameters um, instead. I think the, um, I, know, I understand this is still a work in progress, uh, but the concept of having um, some sort of reduced roof line on the addition. So when you're looking at it from that side or from the, that side, from the, the neighbor's side, okay. not as I said, saying like a huge big new yes. box. And you yes. don't get the full two two flights looking at it from the side. Yeah, yeah, um, completely understand. And then the way this is shown again, it's the windows are in garage portion rather than in living area upstairs. Yeah. Okay. Um, something to think about for the board is both the setback, which is sort of the first question, and then typically we're approving, we're approving to a set of plans. And since these are preliminary, um, I don't know if, if you would need to sort of give, if the, the, if the votes were to go in favor of approving this, make it contingent or I guess uh, continue it until there were um, plans because we, if we approve this set of plans, then that's what would be, that would be the scope of your variance that would then get recorded mm -hmm. and it would be building to these sets of plans. 
and you would either you could come back for an amendment perhaps or keep it open until the plans were finalized again if if the setback is is approved thoughts from thoughts from my board here yeah because my question is whether we're approving a concept or we're approving plans and it seems like the plans are conceptual right now right yeah, so that exactly because we we approve plans and if um, I mean if you want to take a straw poll on would a setback variance be granted for something like this um, then you know, we can easily do that but I think if if you're going to go if you're still working on these and want to go change them it may put you in in an awkward position if we say Yes, you know, if we all say, great, this is perfect, you may build per these plans, and then you change them and we want to get your building permit, and you're building something different, then you wouldn't, then our approval or our variance wouldn't um, be working for you. It was my um, understanding when we first talked about the plans, and I spoke to you, Kathy, about when I submitted these, if there was if there was any small amendments, and I mean small, I don't mean like we're gonna totally scrap the whole idea and it's gonna look entirely different. Uh, but if there was any changes at all, like again, small amendments to the exterior, if that was okay. And the answer was yes. So I just wanna make sure, cause that's why you know we went forward with this, um, this process. Cause it was mainly about, can we expand to this setback? Can we reach, you know, Three car garage for those dimensions and gain that extra, you know, just under five feet. Um, that was really, you know, what was in question. I said, and with that being said, if we made any changes or went below the setback, like we didn't need the five feet, we only went two, whatever it was. Um, the answer was yes, that I was given. So I just want to make sure, because when I talk about early stages, I don't mean like we're going to scrap the whole idea and do something entirely different. I just mean small changes, like you know, something that just might make it look less, I don't know, massive, like just, just something like minor. I don't mean anything. Do you know what I mean? I maybe I, I don't know, gave off the wrong impression, but I did ask this. I don't remember I asked, I mean, Kathy, I spoke to you like several times because I didn't know, trying to understand the whole process, but, um, but it, again, it was my understanding that that was all right to make, if I did, there was small amendments to the um, exterior. So if there are minor modifications, I don't think, I would not have an issue with those. Okay. And um, if there are minor modifications, you can come in front of the board for a approval of a minor modification. It doesn't require re-notice to the public. It's just something that we can do as an okay. administrative matter. Okay. Um, and we are all for you doing things that make things even more aesthetically pleasing. Um, but what we're what we wouldn't want to see is if we approve this set of plans and then there was a two full stories on the garage. I mean, the, the roof line going up to and over, because that would be, we look at the whole mass thing. We look at the, at the architectural components of it. Um, so it's not build anything you want within 20 feet. It's, you may build this. And again, minor modifications are not an issue. Um, thing, if you went, needed less space again not an issue um but we do approve to a set of plans presented to us okay so i think it's, it's up to you a bit to tell us how far you are in your design and if you really think this is what you want us the board to consider approving um with potential minor modifications or if you think you're doing a different design, then, then we really should look at that design. And for, for that purpose, I think, you know, I would reference A-2.2 because I think that that gives that um, uh, side view that um, Ms. Platt was discussing. Uh, the one that's on the screen now is the, all four of those images are the existing um, structure. So you get that view in the bottom right hand corner um, of X 2.1. That's kind of what your neighbor sees, right? Except for oh. the, the build out, that entire, that's all coming towards, I'm assuming again, it's 
nine Kings row. Um, but the elevation and, and perspective that's provided on the proposed exterior elevation under drawing A-2.2 kind of shows what that wall is gonna look like. And now it's gonna be two stories with four windows and a sloping, a sloping um, roof that while it will be coming down from the peak towards okay. 11, so right, that you just missed it. It's not, it's the one before that. Right. Bob, you're, you're absolutely Traffic. right. That was, those, those were existing conditions not proposed. And right, so not the, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a, this is it. So that's what your neighbor's gonna see. And not only yeah. is your neighbor gonna see that, but it's gonna be closer. That's kind of the idea for them. But I can't tell you what distance their house is from your property, from the property line either. So it's kind of, and I, I think um, now that the, um, the neighbor's um, comments were submitted, do we have anything from a particular nine? And did, did nine Kings Row, uh, have they seen the plan kind of question, which is always yeah. relevant. Yeah, we shared our plans with all of our neighbors. And I think, Kathy, did those come through okay? Uh, yes, I got up. Okay, yeah, there should be four. So it was from both the neighbors to the left and right of us, um, the ones that's directly affecting the Smiths, and then Lacoco's on the other side of us, and then the two across the street. So we did, we shared everything with them. Um, I, 13. I have one from, we are Tim and Tia Smith, residents of Nine Kings Row. We want to express our complete support of our direct abutter neighbors, Christopher and Renee, for their garage expansion. We moved in the neighborhood almost four years ago, and we have loved being neighbors to Christopher and Renee. Their constant care of their home shows tremendously, and the attention to detail of everything they do makes living next to them a joy. The love of their home and family always shows, which is why we are excited for their project that will help with their growing family. We support everything they would like to do 100% and are happy to speak with any board members if need be. We hope the ZBA approves the bonds variance request. Sincerely, thank you. Very helpful. And that was from the, the residents of number nine, Kathy, correct? That was nine. I can also read 13. If you would, thank you. Um, yeah, members of the North Reading Zone board, our names are Dominic, Sarah, Lococo, residents of 13 Kings Row, North Reading for 19 years. We are writing to you in support of our director butters, neighbors, Christopher and Renee Bond. Our understanding is they are requesting a variance to construct a garage expansion on their property. The Bonds have moved into the house next door to us eight years ago. They have been fantastic neighbors. They keep their home and property impeccable. They constantly care for their home and have beautified their landscape and home front. Their constant attention and improvements have made living next door to them an absolute pleasure. Our understanding is the Bonds hope to expand their family of five with additional children. Having a variance to extend their existing garage will help them manage their growing family. We 100% support this and are happy to speak directly with any board member to assist in this process. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions or concerns. We can be reached at information. We hope the board does approve the bonds with us at four. Sincere, Dominic, and Sarah Lacoco. Let me see if there's another one. I have um, <clears throat> Very nice. Annette and Mark Schilly from 14 Kings Road. My husband and I are Mark and Annette Schilly, and I have been residents of North Reading since 2000. We have lived at 14 Kings Row the entire time, which will be 22 years in April. We are writing this letter to the North Reading ZBA in support of our neighbors, Christopher and Renee Bond, who live across from us at 11 Kings Row. We are in complete support of the variants they are requesting for their garage expansion. Chris and Renee have been wonderful neighbors as well as loving and involved parents. They have meticulously cared for their property since moving in eight years ago. Their hope to expand their garage will not only add value to the neighborhood, but will important, importantly help them manage their growing family. 
We truly hope the board will approve the variance request. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us. Um, sincerely, Mark and Annette Chile. And one more from 12 Pedro. Um, dear members of uh, North Reading Zoning Board, we are Frank and Lisa Trichetta, residents of 12 Kings Row. We have been North Reading residents for 23 years. We are writing to the ZBA to give our full support of the variance requested by our neighbors, Christopher and Renee Bond, for their garage expansion. Since moving here eight years ago, they have kept their home in pristine condition and have been a wonderful addition to the neighborhood. The garage expansion will help support their growing family, and we support them in any way possible. We truly hope the board approves their request. If anyone has any questions, please reach out to us. Thank you, Frank, Frank and Lise. Lisa Trishilla. I think that's it. Wow. Thank you, Kathy. And I'll put the, I'll attach to all of your application in there. You want me to put the um, map up again? Uh, I, I think, I think I, I don't know about the rest of the board, but I think I'm, I'm pretty, pretty. Uh, I've got a pretty good, a, a strong idea of what the, uh, what the proposed plan would be. Um, and once again, I'll, I'll defer to uh, Jennifer because it sounds as if, while I, the, the grant or the approval of this variance request, it sounds as uh, the applicant is trying to avoid trying to get into something that won't go further. Um, we could do a straw, but I don't even know if that's really necessary or appropriate in this matter. Uh, that it doesn't sound as if the final design and construction will be substantially different from the rendered drawings that we've seen today. Is that a fair statement? Um, um, yes. So I think it, as we consider the um, application, I think we can just simply rely on that um, and the, the drawings submitted. And while it's true that there might be some changes, um, I don't think they're going to be anything different than what we've discussed here. And while I'll acknowledge that the community planning asked about the true hardship um, trying to be addressed by the applicant. Um, and again, it's just my suspicion that they're wondering, why do you need three cars instead of two car garage or a bigger car garage? Um, and that's that comes with some merit. Uh, I think the point being made by the most affected and direct uh, party, that being uh, the residents at nine Kings Row um, have endorsed the application. And I think in all fairness, that should be noted. Agreed, agreed. And so I would say, and I, I will leave it to the, the three of you to um, make motions and, and decide as you, as you see fit. Uh, but if, to, if this is approved, uh, then I would just advise the applicant, if you make anything, want to make any Thing other than a you know, minor changes to the plant, then just come back in front of us for us to take a look at that. And if it's just minor ones, um, it's great of, if it's, if we can't really tell, then that's, can be, you know, we don't need to hear about it. Um, but if you're making any substantial changes, then you would just, you would want to come back to the board so if there's ever something down the road that what you were approved for matches what was actually constructed. Of course. And to that point, um, just so that's a very clear understanding, if it's, you know, that we're talking small changes, not substantial. So, um, at, and 
just so there's no misunderstanding if you know a lot of it, this will still go to the ongoing overview and purview of the building inspector uh, even after the grant of permit uh, to check on the project and make sure that it's staying within uh, that which is submitted and that's true for everybody who submits uh, not just uh, in this case um, for the bonds um, uh, does anybody, does anybody, occupancy so i'll move to close the public hearing can i get a second i'm maria lockhart second that thank you uh we'll close the public hearing uh would any any board member like to make a motion on the uh submitted application yeah i, I like to make a motion um, on the petition of uh, Christopher Bond, 11 Kings Row, North Reading, Mass, map 66, parcel 16, um, for a five foot variance mm -hmm. from the front uh, yard setback um, for porch and setback requirements per the dimension and density regulations of the North Reading bylaws. The, um, voting for a five foot variance from the northerly side setback to allow construction of an attached three car garage um, as presented this evening uh, in accordance with the plan submitted to the board. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ragucci. And to that point, uh, again, it's not to exceed the five foot grant if in the event that you don't need that, that's obviously within your purview. However, if it does turn out that you think after final draw that it might need to be, um, I'd strongly urge the applicant to uh, reapply in the in the event that the uh, application is granted tonight. Can, uh, is there a second on Mr. Ragucci's motion? I'm Maria Lockhart, second that motion. Uh, thank you for the second. Um, call the vote, all in favor of the um, uh, the variance application. Yeah, Vincent Ragucci, aye. Maria Lockhart, aye. Uh, Bob Brain, aye. Uh, thank you, board members. Um, so, attendant to the uh, grant of the um, the uh, setback uh, variance approval. Um, again, there's a 20 day appeal period after which um, you can receive a copy of it. Um, I think it gives you uh, granted and ability to go forward with your um, more substantial plan and construction phase. Um, uh, and again, um, I don't think there's anything more, more but do, again, uh, keep us appraised if there is a change in any of the, um, of the uh, construction or the, um, the development. Yes. And yeah. once you do once you do get the original variants, you do need to record that with the registry. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Madam Chair. All right. Do you, want to, um, do you want to address the shed or do you want to? Yes. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, there was some after um, submission of the. Uh, so the, um, can I just. This. Yeah, please, Kathy. I think you can um, speak to it directly. So Jerry said that initially he said he would want it moved, but he did say this afternoon that if the, if the he, they could keep the shed there, but maybe you should give them a variance for it. No. Since the neighbors have lived with it this long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't, we can't act on that because it wasn't okay. part of the hearing. Um, To this point, Mr. and Mrs. Bond, I think that the cleanest way to manage this, uh, it's it, it's been raised by the uh, town inspector that the shed that's now existing and won't be changed in any way with the new construction. Um, it's never granted any variance for its placement as close to the property line as it is. Um, uh, to avoid being cited for this, I think uh, the, the prudent thing to do is to submit an application even though the property the, the structure is in place to seek a, a variance grant 
um, for it. Otherwise, or look into moving it as yeah. well. Or you, or you could pull it off the lot line. Um, sheds are supposed to be 10 feet off the lot line. Okay, uh, so you said submit um, submit an application for it? Or just move it. Yeah, I, I would, okay. That would probably be your tool. Well, more it likely. Depends if you get a, a site, <laughs> if you get an, if you get an enforcement notice from the building inspector, you will need to move it. I don't know if he's going that direction or not. Just FYI. Okay, and this is Jerry. I would speak to. Is that right? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should um, just wait to see if you get a notice. And if you get a notice, yeah. then you should just apply for a variance. Apply for a variance. Okay. After, if you get a notice from Jerry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's like a in rush. The, right. So with, with, in the event you get a notice, um, then you might want to address it. You could address it in one of two ways. You could apply for okay. a variance or you could move the shed. Or you okay. could try to wait them out. But, I, you know, um, that's probably not the most prudent thing and keep in mind that you will be <laughs> on site with the development of the, the new construction. So it's kind of an interesting um, uh, situation. But again, that's something yeah. for uh, for your consideration as, as much as it is. Uh, anyway. Okay, I see it on the, all right, it's, it's 1.6 feet from, from the sideline. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay, so just, if anything comes in and then submit an application for a variance at that, we should receive. Well, like we're not gonna, we're not, we're not going to decide on this one. It's not in front yeah. of us for decision now. Right. So we're gonna see how this one transpires. Okay. I don't think that, I don't know the Latin for it's a heads up. I think it's just kind of yeah. one of those things <laughs> where. You got to kind of wait and see, but keep it in mind that uh, friendly reminder. It's 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 been <laughs> noted, but it's not part of tonight's map. Okay, okay. If it's something that you can easily move or relocate. I don't know anything about the construction of this. It's on a, It'll be in the middle of the lawn. <laughs> it's on it. Well, we first moved in. Yeah, we we. I mean, most everybody in the neighborhood they're all against the fence and we didn't know much of uh, all the rules and everything, but we did go to the town and I spoke to a gentleman there, Albert DeSelvo, 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 I don't know if he's still at the town, but that's why I spoke with that um, okay thing. So he had come out to the property and this was back a few months before COVID. Um, at any rate, um, cause I think everything else, all the other clearances I, from my understanding is all, okay, it's just the size. Yeah, 10 feet. We have 20 feet to the pavers. It'd be in... I know it'd be in the middle of our pavers. And yeah, that wouldn't be so um, but, um, okay. So we'll, I think it's, I think the way we should just leave it tonight for the board and for your own benefit is just to, um, keep it in mind that it okay. has been, and sure. You, when, when, and if that matter, if it does find its way to you, um, just keep in mind that it's it, at that time would be best to address it. Okay. We have the same and, process. And this is through the same process we would go through. Um, like this evening, this. Or is it similar? Yeah. It's just like this. Similar. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But. Uh, so we're not looking to get ahead of ourselves. We just, okay. it was brought to our attention and, and mail uh, notes from Jerry with regard sure. to the layout and the placement, that's all. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. That's it for this evening. All right, thank you. We did it. Uh, <laughs> good luck, thank you. And uh, thank you. good luck with construction. Thank you very much. Appreciate all your time very much. We're excited. All right, best of luck. Thank you. Uh, so with returning back to the agenda, um, take note that um, 
a matter for a special permit for 340 Main Street. Um, the applicant has asked um, Mr. Say to uh, continue that to our April meeting, which um, while we're yep. at this stage, we should discuss and confirm a date for the April uh, meeting. He actually asked for a two month extension. Fair um, enough, thank there you. There is an applicant coming in to our meeting in April who may be a tenant there. And I think he probably wants to see how that can go. So, um, um, to the board, um, prospective uh, meeting date for our April. I take note that uh, school vacation for public schools is the week of, uh, would be if, uh, following a Thursday meeting date, the 21st would be a school vacation week day. Um, I might suggest uh, April 7th or the 14th, but the 7th, um, will avoid any conflict with um, the religious holidays. I have a conflict on the 14th. It's like the 7th? I mean, I'm sorry, on the 7th. Okay. okay. Um, 14th is okay with me. I think I can do the 14th as well. I should be able to do the 14th. And Kathy, what did you say? What, what are we looking at on our agenda for the 14th thus far? Um, I believe I have two more home occupation special permits and um, the special use for 340 Main. Uh, he wants to do a detail um, and repair shop. Um, but he's looking to go to May, wasn't he? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, no, right, no, so that's the, the tenant wants to come in in April. He's already filed, but um, Jose wants to go to May. So what does he want to do in May if he already has a, a tenant coming in in April? I think he's probably going to withdraw in May if the tenant- he's gonna, I'm sorry, I, Kathy, I'm having really bad audio with you. It's You're saying what? He probably wants to withdraw in May. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So if his tenant gets approved, he doesn't. Right. Doesn't right. see us. Okay. Perfect. And there's another one for um, uh, a variance for lighting off of Park Street. Uh, 172. It's where it's after the library on the left. So that's probably four, five there. And before the plaza. Um, before. So I mean, which way you're heading? I mean, because after the library is the town common. So, so must, the other way, it, the other way. After the right, library going. Um, there's a, there's a, right, there's a small business. Um, yeah, like a cave. Located right on the the neighboring property. And then after that, there's a couple of residences and then you go down even further and there's um, some it's one quasi- It's Park. Right. Uh, has, has there been any submission? Um, he has or did they filed, approach you to ask about it? He filed on the website. Um, he hasn't supplied any supporting document though that I can share with you. Okay. Oh. Well, that all sounds just lovely. Will, we, will oh, we be surprised sorry. if Will we be surprised if Miss Platt's driving that night too? <laughs> they wouldn't let me. You wouldn't let me in, Kathy. I tried a dozen times. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you. I saw your picture. Yeah, and, and it was me. I kept it's. I kept trying to unmute, and it said the administrator would not unmute allow applicants to unmute without permission. Like, wow. well, oh, that's because you were calling. And I, only, I only had one, I mean, I could only use so many hands and <laughs> drop at the same time, so. <laughs> but you guys were phenomenal, all of you. 
Oh, no. Thank you very much. <laughs> now I know I do not need to be here. So have that. All right, just for the uh, for the purpose of the agenda and closing the meeting, um, I didn't get the meet the minutes from March uh, from the February tenth meeting. Uh, I didn't have a chance to review them, so uh, could I? I'd like to, uh, as an administrative matter, move the uh, approval of the um, minutes from our February tenth meeting to our next meeting. Perfect. Second. Um, uh, that's fine. Uh, all in favor of, of that continuance, say aye. 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 Bob Green. Uh, thank you. Uh, and um, did we decide on the 14th? Is that a, a good? Right. So, okay. uh, I, so uh, Vince, you had, so we're going to go uh, April 14th, the next yep. meeting. Okay. That's fine. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay, guys. Well done. Just another phenomenal <clears throat> meeting by the North Reading Zoning Board of Appeals. That's it. Thank you. Thank you all for doing doing so much. You guys are amazing. It's nice to have this board here. So you guys are awesome. Well, the the last thought on this. It's it's interesting that you have executive session and then uh, that's where the conversation ends. Uh, you know, for purposes yes, of public hearing. So. Yes, it does. <laughs> yep. So, would any, anybody like to move to close? To adjourn. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much for your patience and courtesy. Enjoy your um, rest of your evening and the weekend. Thank yeah. you, Jennifer. Okay. For, thank Thanks, you, Kathy, Sean. for finally letting Jennifer in. <clears throat> Thanks, Kev. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks so much. You too. Thank you, you too. Bye.